in this video. This is where my new hair is gonna be. I'm gonna be talking about why I got a hair transplant and how hair transplants work. It's like a never ending process. Because it's not like how I thought. It's like too late to back out. I can't let it back out. Before I get into it, I know what you guys are thinking. Sonny, you did not need a hair transplant. You're beautiful the way you are. Your hair was thick and voluminous like Jason Momoa. It was completely unnecessary. Thank you, you're probably right. But this is something I wanted to do for myself and I had no idea the result would be this good. Take a look. Let's go back to the problem. I know people might think I was losing my hair a lot over time, but even if you go back to 10, 12 years ago, I always had a bit of a widow's peak right here. And then the hairline didn't move back much. I just was losing density of my hair everywhere. For a long time, I was starting to hate the way it looked on camera because I wear a bandana, because a bandana's cool. The problem is that when I would wear the bandana, you would just always see this skin part right up here and it really bothered me. I would try to maybe make the bandana thicker or push it up more and it just looked weirder and weirder until one day a friend who has been on this show who I will not reveal told me that he had gotten a hair transplant in Thailand and he said it was pretty cheap actually the place I went it cost three thousand dollars three thousand dollars for a procedure that lasts a lifetime I can't believe it this is something I never would have researched for myself but since my friend did it and he had good results I thought you know what I'm going to Thailand all those videos I made in Thailand for the second channel that was right before the surgery so before I get to the procedure the answer as to why I wanted to get a hair transplant is because I just wanted to look better on camera. Anytime somebody gets work done on themselves, it can be kind of controversial. There's a line somewhere, right? Some things seem understandable, like braces, which I've had in the past, and then some things seem a bit too far. We all know those people, when you see them, they've gone too far. I didn't think having a hair transplant was nothing, but it didn't seem like a crazy life-altering surgery that I couldn't come back from. That was until the day of the surgery when I freaked out. <laughs> All right, so this is the last time you're gonna see me as a semi-balding 37-year-old after this. I don't know, but I'm hoping for the best. I'm a little bit nervous. Right now, I'm about to step in to a surgery. I'm mostly scared because it's an eight-hour surgery and they've just blindfolded you for eight hours and you just sit there and, ugh, who wants that? So I'm gonna head in right now and uh, see what happens. The only way I picked the clinic I went to is because it's where my friend went to. Right before the surgery, I asked them if I could shoot some behind the scenes clips so I could show people later. To my surprise, they said yes. And I wanna make it clear, they did not pay me to make this video. I'm making this video because I think it is an interesting procedure. And if I was one of you guys, I would think, hey, how the hell does a hair transplant work? Well, here's how. So before you get the procedure, you sit down with the doctor and they tell you a bunch of things that you maybe should have researched before that moment, which I didn't. First they said, there are a bunch of things that can go wrong. Your head can reject the hairs. You can have this hair shock syndrome where a bunch of your hair falls out. And the weirdest thing is because they are transplanting your hair. If you don't take the special pills, you could end up keeping the hair in front that they transplanted and losing the rest of the hair behind it, looking like a complete psychopath. What throws people off is that after a few weeks, most of the hair they transplanted falls out. Oh yes, this is a long-term commitment. They told me your hair is gonna be looking good and ideal in 12 to 18 months. 12 to 18 months. I thought, I already paid the deposit. Let's just do this. The next thing they do is they draw where your hairline should be. The procedure includes looking at three interns and them saying, hmm, maybe the right side should be higher or, uh, or lower. And then they look at you and they say, what do you think? And I go, I don't, you guys should be good at this. I don't know. It was very intimidating. Suddenly I'm looking at my forehead and I'm like, wait, is that side too high? Is this one too low? Am I gonna have a lopsided hairline now? Eventually I just let go. I told them to choose and I think they did a great job. From here, it was time for the procedure to start. And if you are squeamish, if you're sensitive, then don't watch this part. So first they take a little tool and they start punching little holes in your scalp. All right, the first step is complete. The whole top of my head is numb. I'm a little bit woozy because they gave me a Valium. This is the hole making process. It doesn't sound that nice. They put tons and tons of holes. You can see some are still bleeding. And later those will be the reservoirs for the hair follicle to actually go into. So uh, step one, many more steps remain. From here, they have a drill machine. This is like one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had. Imagine this is your hair and this is the drill machine. It screws down to the root of your hair and pulls it out. 
We would have done step two. Step two is extraction. So step one was filling all these little holes in my head. Well, now we need to fill those holes with something. And that is hairs on the other side of the back of my head. So they've extracted a bunch of hairs, 2,800 to be specific. And then they're gonna put all those hairs in my head. Now it's time for step three, putting the donor hairs here into this area. They have a little tool. It's just like this little bottle with a hair at the end. So they have a whole team working to take the hairs and put them in this little device and shove them into those holes that they've made already. This feels really weird because you can't necessarily feel any pain, but you do feel the pressure of someone kind of torquing on your head a little bit. It took hours and hours, and I think I took a lunch break in the middle of it, but mainly I tried to sit on that table, be quiet, and try to get this thing over. At this point, I am full of dread. I'm wondering, what the F have I done? Was this a mistake? Is my hair going to fall out? And if it was even going to work? I mean, I saw some guys on Reddit who talked about getting a hair transplant in Turkey for $5,000. It all fell out, but they went through all that pain still anyway. So this is what I'm thinking at this point. That is until I see myself in the mirror once all the transplant has been completed. The way your head and skin looks right after the transplant is completely terrifying. That apparently is completely normal. All right, so it's been roughly 11 hours since I got here and it's finally over. You said it went well overall. Be careful because it needs 24 hours now to kind of harden and stay in place. So got to be very careful. Right now we're going to do some after pictures and uh, go home. It is day two. Check it out. So I've not washed my hair. You can see it looks still kind of nasty. Last night I slept okay. You have to sleep on your back only. You can't go on the side or anything like that. I took a little bit of a Valium. They gave me some Valium again. Can you believe they just let me take Valium home? And then I slept really well. Today, I'm going to the clinic for hopefully the last time. They're going to, as they put it, teach me to wash my hair. Hopefully, they're happy with this healing. I didn't bleed a bunch or anything like that. It just looks kind of crusty and my hair looks greasy. And I look like a wannabe sushi chef or something. And I have the diaper on the back of my head. So they're gonna take that off. Before I go out, I had to put on my bonnet. This is to protect from dust and from sun or anything like that. So I'm gonna be wearing this for the next two weeks anytime I go outside. Isn't that cool? Thank God I'm married already. Otherwise. You know, virgin for life. Bro, how cool do I look? So fresh, huh? When you go to the clinic, they take even more pictures and then they try to teach you how to wash your hair because you cannot just you have to like pour a warm cup of water over your head and then pat it dry ever so slowly. Now, they would prefer if you could stay in Thailand for a week to recover, but I had to fly later that day. Feeling better, looking slightly better, although you can see I got a little bubbly head hair, huh? Still pretty swollen, but a lot of the redness is gone. It's looking less like a nightmare and more like little baby hairs. Time to put on my little bonnet, head out of Thailand and head back to Vietnam. Let's go. The healing process took some time. They said no drinking, no exercise for two months. That's literally all that brings joy to my life. What I did instead was not that. After two days, I started walking. A couple more days after that, I was doing cardio and running and nothing too crazy. I wasn't deadlifting, but I was exercising again. But was I drinking again? Also, yes. After three days, I had a small cocktail. What they said to me is you can't drink because you might start bleeding. What I heard is drink, but only up until you start bleeding. Luckily, I did drink and I never bled. From here, the healing process felt like it took forever. What's interesting is I have a lot of footage because I do this show, so I can show you over time what happened. Mongolia. Mongolia is very sunny, and this area became really sensitive to sun and would sunburn very easily. So I decided just to wear a hat. From there, a couple months later, we went to Indonesia. Here, I finally felt comfortable wearing the bandana again, but you can see a lot of the hair has fallen out, and it looks pretty terrible. I think it maybe even looks worse than before I got the transplant. If you look at some of the scenes in Indonesia, I just have these big, empty spots spots where there's no hair. After that, we did Sri Lanka, still pretty poor. After that, over the next few weeks, it started to heal and just little hairs would begin to sprout and grow until now it's finally become thick. It has been about four months since my hair transplant and I must say I am blown away. I mean, there was all nothing here before and now it's all my hair. It blends in pretty perfectly. And then now when I wear the bandana, boom, hair the whole way. No more big gaps. 
in the end, do I regret doing it? Alas, no. But of course, I had my reservations in the beginning. I didn't know what to expect. You go in there, you sign these disclaimers, they tell you all the bad things that can go wrong, and then you walk out of there with a giant swollen mushroom head. Now, after healing, after going through the whole process, I don't regret it at all. I mean, it seems similar to having braces. That wasn't fun, but I went through the pain, I went through the discomfort, and then finally, I have 89% straight teeth. This video is not meant to be a commercial for hair transplants. I'm not even suggesting that people should go out and get hair transplants. If I wasn't on camera and always looking at myself, I probably wouldn't have done it, but I just have a weird career. If you are somebody who is losing their hair, there are drugs out there that will help you keep what you have before you lose it all. But uh, there's a lot of guys that look good with their head shaved. I thought I looked decent with my head shaved too. I've done that in the past, but the bandana with the shaved head, it looks like a flower pot with no flowers. It just felt empty. So if you were curious about how hair transplants work, that's how it worked. If you want to get one, do it. If you don't, don't. It's not a commercial. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you have a beautiful, super hairy holiday season. Bye. A peace. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality, custom graphic inlay. And our street food around the world graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.